Morning to you too. How are you? I'm good. You? Okay, I'm fine. Uh, Francisca, hi. Hi. How are you? I'm good. Daughter, daughter. Okay, sour. Messi, about Riako? Poa. My potato, I'm happy. But do you Okay, chuka mnafanya nini huko? Hakuna <laughs> ni mvua tu. Ni mvua? Ai hakuna nyosha? Mm. Eh. Yeah. Okay. But at least uh, mumepanda you uh, have something kwa shamba. Yes. Ah, okay. So far. Okay, let me come. Thank you for that. So I think um I've been able to share some notes on uh, communication skills, yeah? Mm. Yeah, and uh, I just hope that uh, you're able to write those notes and that also you're able to listen to the videos. Have you managed to listen to the videos? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Eva Sasa? Eva. Ah, wow. Uh huh. Abari ya masiku mingi. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Ah, good. Now, anyway, basically, I just hope that uh, you have been able to write those notes, and that uh, also you've been able mm. to listen to the audios. I mean, not actually the audios, the videos. And uh, is there anything that you'd want me to clarify? Is there anything that maybe you feel you didn't understand and perhaps you need some uh, clarification? Um, no, I'm okay. Hmm? I'm okay. Okay. But uh, basically, are you able, I mean, not just you, but... Uh, all of us here, are you able to understand uh, what we mean by communication? Yes. Huh? Yeah. Basically, yes. yeah, basically communication is just a, a process of uh, trying to pass information from uh, a sender to a receiver 
through a medium with an intention of getting feedback. So communication process relays around a sender and we say that a sender is the originator of the meeting. We also say that we have a receiver. The receiver is the person who gets to or who gets to receive the message. Then we mentioned about the medium. Now the medium is a channel. Yeah, for example, right now, I am trying to communicate to you. Which medium am I using to communicate to you? Which channel am I using to communicate to you? That is now what you call the medium. And now feedback, yeah? Feedback, you know, when you communicate, it is important for you to ensure that you get feedback. This feedback could be positive or negative. But bottom line is feedback completes the communication process. Without feedback, you're not able to know whether maybe the other person has understood the message. Yeah, because you can only get to know they have understood the message when they kept when they when they get back to you and tell you, oh yeah, I didn't understand this point or maybe you give them something and they are not able to do it. And then now you realize that they, the, the communication actually nev was never uh, reached as it was intended. So without feedback, you cannot complete the communication process. And our feedback is in this way. For example, right now, us guys are, uh, you know, we are learning. Okay, so how do we understand, how do we ensure that our students have understood? Yeah, what ways are we going mm -hmm. to use to get to know, have our students understood what we have learned? So which ways do you think we can get that information? Hmm? Which ways do you think? Okay, I'm saying, eh? How do I know me that you people have understood what I have been teaching? How will I know? When we ask questions. When you ask questions, okay? Yeah. Which other way? Uh, Which other way? Gestures. Gestures. Yes, if chance. you nod in a yeah. one show, exactly. Uh, if, for example, when you nod, yeah, in a one show, okay. then there is a certain position when you sit in a one show, you are concentrating. Okay, yeah, so I can get to know whether you guys have understood, maybe by you guys asking questions. I can also give you exams. Yeah, and through those exams, yes. once I have marked those exams, I am able to know, okay, maybe they didn't understand this point, they understood this point. So what am I trying to say? That it is only through feedback that we are able to know that that, uh, that particular uh, information that I wanted to pass to you has, actually be received. So that's why we are saying that feedback completes the communication process. Then also I was able to give a summary of why communication is important in an organization. We say that one of the main importance of our communication is that it enhances relationships in the organization. Yeah, when people are able to communicate with each other, they are able to even resolve problems. Also communication is useful because it assists in decision making. Yeah, sometimes you could be having issues in an organization 
And as a result of that, yeah, unless you come together and realize that this is the problem and try to communicate that problem, that issue might not be resolved. That decision cannot be made. Then I also mentioned that co uh, communication also is a form of entertainment, yeah? I am sure most of us love watching maybe movies or series, yeah? Which one do you like watching, uh, Eva? Series. Mm. Mm -hmm. Are he behind? Yes. <laughs> Tahidi, hi. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What about you, Dorcas? Which one do you like watching? Honesty, which one? Movies. Mm. Mm. <laughs> hmm? Francisca, which one do you watch? Niger. I the Nollywood. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Paula, which one do you watch? Series. Yeah? Series. Okay. I think, I don't know, but I'm assuming that as a result of you watching these movies, yeah, is there anything that you learn from them? Some, yes. Some, no. Uh, Francisca, is a Hollywood. What do you learn? I think the only thing that you learn from those ones is uh, more on witchcraft. <laughs> 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 I think it is because those things have got a lot of those things. Huh? I think that's the only thing that you, you can learn from those ones. <laughs> no. Yeah. Huh? You can, but uh, I think. Yeah. But I think bottom line is <laughs> there's something you learn through this either those series or those movies or whatever you watch. Yeah. So yes. don't you think when they are doing, you know, when you're watching that movie, there's some information that is being passed to you. And as a result of uh, passing that information, yeah, where they are passing that information, you also get entertained. Still? Yeah. So that's what yes. you're saying, yeah? Communication also is uh, useful, yeah? And uh, sometimes, you know, it is important, you know, it, it doesn't matter how it comes, but sometimes you can also get entertained at the same time, you get to know some information. Then of course you say that communication also is used to persuade. Persuade is trying to convince somebody either to agree or to disagree, yeah? So when it, it is only through communication. For example, if there's something I want to share with you and uh, perhaps maybe uh, you're not for the idea, yeah? So I might use that uh, opportunity to try and convince you, yeah? To either buy that idea or either disagree or, yeah? To convince you to think like the way I want to think. Yeah, so that's what you're saying. You can use communication to persuade. Yeah, have you seen these uh, sales people who normally sell uh, stuff? Yes. Yes, we have. Mm -hmm. So how do they yeah. normally behave? Behave in what terms? Behave as They're very in, yeah? convincing. Yeah, as in maybe they have something and they, they really want you to buy. How do they go about it? 
they persuade you, they tell you the benefits of that thing. Yeah. But for example, if they just came and gave you that thing and told you, yeah, if this is the product they are selling, they come and give you this and they don't say nothing. Yeah. Is that enough to convince you to buy that product? No. no. Exactly. So that's what you're saying. Eh? It is only through communication that you're able to persuade or to convince somebody to either agree or disagree with the information that we share with them. Okay. Yeah. Then we were able to say, we were also able to look at the potentials of communication where we were able to find who a sender is. Sharon, how are you? Hey. Okay. So we're also able to look at the, the what the the essential, yeah, all those things that are required for us to be able to communicate. We were able to define who a sender is. And we said that a sender is the originator of the information. We were able to look at the receive, re receiver or the person who we call the receiver. Yeah, it is the person or uh, the person whom the message is intended for. Then we were also able to look at the message. Message itself, message itself is the content of the information that is meant to be passed. We're also able to define uh, what a channel is, and the channel we said is a medium through which information is passed. And lastly, we were able to look at feedback, where I have been able to explain to you what are the, you know, why it is important to get feedback and I've said that it is only through feedback that you're able to know whether this person has understood the message. It is also through feedback that you're able to know whether that message has reached the person intended for. And also it is only through feedback that you're able to plan for other consecutive messages yeah so feedback helps to plan either has the message been understood if it has been understood is there anything else that you need to clarify yeah and if there's nothing else for you to to clarify does it mean now that the message that has been sent out has been interpreted in the manner under which you wanted it to be taken. Because I can send you information. I can send you a letter, yeah? And this letter, you are not able to interpret it. Maybe I use a lot of vocabularies on that letter. So you're not able to understand, yeah? So basically, feedback will enable the recipient, I mean, not the recipient, the sender, to get to know whether those three factors have been met. Then also I mentioned about the challenges that we pass through or challenges that we go through when we are communicating. And one of the main challenge is noise. Yeah, noise can be physical, yeah, can be environmental because you know sometimes when you think about noise, you just maybe you might think about maybe noise coming from no 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 no. Do you know having a bad handwriting is also a barrier, which is noise. <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> huh? No, I can just, I, I just imagined something. No, because you know what? If, if you wrote me a uh, letter or you, you gave me a report, uh, which is handwritten, okay? 
and I'm not able to read yeah. this report. Yeah. So the, the, yeah. the fact that I cannot be able to read that report because of your ugly handwriting is a barrier. Mm. And that barrier falls under noise. Okay. I have the other barrier is mm. the environmental one. For example, you're trying to communicate and perhaps it's raining. Yeah. Or maybe you try to communicate mm. yes. and maybe behind here or behind wherever there's a lot of, I mean, people are talking, there's a lot of noise coming out of it. Yeah. So when we talk about noise as a barrier, we talk about noise in a broader perspective. It can be either through the physical noise, you know, noise. Like now, can you hear these birds? Yes. Is that a barrier? Yes, it is. I didn't go enough to hear uko gym, uko gym, exercise or yoga engine. <laughs> Because I'm not scared. Noise. You don't tell me that that is noise. That is a. Uh, it's affecting you from listening to what I'm saying. No. <laughs> You're lucky. My kids are still sleeping. You know, if they were here, they would be screaming. You know. Hmm? We, we don't, in fact, even that's why I chose to have this class early, you know, before they, they wake up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because when they do. See, that's why I'm telling you. That's why I'm telling you. You're going to have to do me a handicap personal trainer. That's why I'm going to have to do me a handicap personal Yeah. So another barrier is language, yeah? So if I decide to communicate in a language that the receiver does not understand, yeah? For example, if I decide to communicate maybe in French and maybe you don't understand that particular language, yeah, or I decide to communicate to, I mean, maybe in Swahili, yeah, and perhaps the person I'm intending to, or the person whom the message is intended for, does not understand that language. So therefore, you will not be able to communicate effectively. Then also we mentioned about poor listening skills as a barrier. So when we talk about poor listening skills as a barrier, what are we trying to say? Maybe I'm trying to pass certain information, but you are not concentrating. Yeah, you're busy doing your own things. Yeah, I'm also trying to communicate or uh, I'm trying to pass certain information, but you know, your mind is not there. Yeah, so what we call those, uh, I mean, that's what we call poor listening skills. And at the end of it all, I'm going to ask you, I, I said uh, this, or maybe I give you the instructions that I wanted you to do. But when you go back to your desk, you're not able to do what I had given instructions on, basically because when I was giving those instructions, you are not attentive, yeah, or you're busy thinking about other things. Another barrier is what we call the wrong choice of medium. In case I decided to communicate to you, and maybe most of us didn't have a smartphone. Okay, so would you would you log in for this lesson? No. Exactly. Yeah. So when you also decide to use the wrong medium. No. Okay, yeah, the wrong media. Maybe I intend to communicate to you through an email. Now, you don't even have an email address. Yeah, or I decide to send you a WhatsApp message, but you don't even have a smartphone. Yeah, so when you use the wrong medium to communicate, it means, therefore, that information might not be received. Also, we talk about the 
emotional state of the receiver. Let's say maybe this receiver, remember we said the receiver is a recipient of that information. So can you imagine maybe this receiver is going through certain challenges in life, yeah? And maybe you're trying to pass certain information to them. Do you think they would be emotionally stable? Yeah, to be able to understand even what you're saying? Huh? No. Exactly, yeah. Because at the end of it all, yeah, you know, sometimes when somebody has a sober mind, they are able to absorb as much. Yeah. So because I know at some point you guys will finish your respective courses and uh, perhaps you'll get an opportunity to go start working. And maybe at some point, some of us will get married. And when you get married, you might have babies. Now you get a nini, then you don't have a house girl. You have to go to work. Yeah, so you're being given instructions by your boss, but you're remembering that your, your baby has been left with uh, the neighbor. Hmm? So you, you, you think you're able to concentrate fully and take all the instructions that is required of you? No. Mm. So what will happen, you will get to do things, but you might end up doing the wrong things. Yeah, because at that particular time, emotionally, you are not stable. So those are some of the barriers that we face when we are communicating. And also, that the, lastly, the main barrier also is on differences in opinion. Remember, we all come from different backgrounds, okay? And sometimes people have different opinions on what they think about life, yeah? So sometimes we could be trying to communicate, but at the end of it all, yeah, because this person comes from this culture or they come from this background, yeah? They might have a different opinion, yeah? From what you feel about certain issues therefore even when you communicate to them they already have an opinion i'm are you hearing me i'm an, i'm talking to myself okay 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 so, so. so those are the barriers that uh, we go through when we are communicating Okay, so up to that point, are we clear? Yes. Okay, sour, sour. Then I think I also shared some notes on the forms of communication, forms of uh, communication. Now, under the forms of uh, communication, I was able to give, you know, when talk about forms of communication, we are just trying to refer to the types, types of communication. Yeah, we say that you've got oral communication, oral stroke verbal communication. Now, oral means communication through spoken words. Yeah, it is speaking. Yeah, this can be in form of a telephone. It can be through interviews. Yeah, when you go for an interview, that is an oral interview because you get to pass information through spoken words. Then you're also able to look at the advantages and the disadvantages of each of these form of communication. Now I have got less than 10 minutes, so I think I have to hurry up and uh, wind up this. Then we say that when you communicate orally or through spoken words, eh, you are able to get instant feedback. Now, instant feedback is very important because I'll be able to know if I ask if I ask you something now, you will tell me yes or no. Yeah. Unlike if I was to write you a letter. 
and put that letter into the post office and wait until you will get that letter. That could take a lot of time. However, for the oral communication, one of its main disadvantages is that it has got no record. Remember, it is communication through spoken words. Now, spoken words, you have no, you cannot come back and say, this is what we agree because there's no evidence of what was discussed. Then we also mentioned about the written communication. Now, written communication comes in form of letters, reports, memos. Now, all these forms, all these examples that I'm mentioning, like letters, uh, <laughs> reports, memos, minutes, I will take you through to show you what it is to write a letter not just write a professional letter yeah maybe you are making an application for a job maybe you are writing to another organization asking them for certain prices of certain items so i will also take you through how to write professional okay letters uh, yeah madam i can't hear the voice please okay you can't hear me Me, I can. Okay, I'm going to ask you. Next, you're Eh. Okay, so did you know you did you take no? I can't, I don't know who. I can't hear you. You can't hear me. We can't hear you. But yeah. me, I can hear you. A boy, I can earphones. Okay, so I will also take you. Oh, I can hear you now. Okay, so I'm not right now. Okay, so I'm not probably. So I'll also take you through how to write those kind of letters. We've got different types of letters. We've got a letter of inquiry. We've got a letter, yeah, of complaint. We've got an apology letter. So I'll take you through. But now these letters, these are letters that are written in an organization. Yeah. So when we talk about written communication, we are referring to communication through writing, writing of reports, writing of letters, writing of minutes, writing of memos. Now, the main advantage of written communication is that there is some record. There is record of what was discussed. Somebody can make a reference to that particular issue. Also, the main disadvantage of a letter is that it lacks instant feedback. I can, you cannot, when I write you a letter, yeah, unless it is an email, you cannot get that instant or immediate feedback. Then we've got the visual, visual communication. Visual communication is through posters, yeah, it is through billboards, it is through uh, pictures, etc. Now, its main advantage, which I also shared, is that it is very easy to understand. Sometimes, when the message, when the picture is well put, you are able to get the message faster. However, it is very expensive because you have to spend money to come up with an attractive image, which also is costly. Then we've got the audio visual. Now, audio visual, the main example of an audio visual is a TV where you are able to see and also you are able to listen. Yeah. So one of the main advantage of this form of communication is that you are able to reach out to a massive population, as in you're able to get a wide coverage. You are able to get to know you're able to reach out to so many people. However, its main disadvantage is that it can only be used to pass information to people who are literate or people who can read and understand. And lastly, 
we've got the non-verbal. Now, non-verbal, it is communication through gestures. Yeah, like when I hold my hand like this, like when I nod my head, like maybe when I hold my chin, yeah, I am trying to communicate. I'm not saying it, but my facial or my body language. So this is communication through signs, through body language, yeah? And this is also one very most important form of communication because sometimes, even without being told that the students are yearning to go and have their breakfast, they'll start yawning, you know? Yeah, so through yawning, yeah, yeah you're able to know, one, maybe they're very bored, two, maybe they are hungry so perhaps you can excuse them i remember when you asked guys who are in nursery school that time long time ago yeah you know sometimes you know you're in kindergarten so you 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 you, you don't want to keep asking for permission to go so soon so you just do your like this on your leg were you guys doing those things yeah i see me i thought you guys are digital you, you'd go and say, excuse me, teacher, can I go to the bathroom? Can I go to the washroom? <laughs> yeah, but, but how comes these teachers were able to read? They were able to read the signs and see, okay, these students, perhaps they may not be saying it, but maybe they want to go out for, or they want to go use their washroom. So that is another form or communication, which we call the non-verbal. So up to that point, is there anything that you'd want me to clarify? <clears throat> Eva, anything that you want me to clarify? Mm. The disadvantage and advantage of nonverbal communication. Okay, the disadvantages and the name. Now, one of the main mm -hmm. advantage is that even if you're trying to communicate through, you know, sometimes this nonverbal does not work mm. on its own. Maybe I am trying, maybe it, it, it normally goes hand in hand with oral communication. Maybe I am trying to talk to, um, trying to pass information to you, okay? But through the way I see you, I'm able to know, is there something that I need to do differently? So one of the main advantage of this form of communication is that it enhances, it improves on the oral communication because if i'm able to read certain signs and maybe i'm trying to explain something and the truth what i am seeing from your facial i'm able to know have they understood or not what is it that i need to clarify more now its main disadvantage is that sometimes you might not be able to interpret yeah i might not be able to understand what you really want because you know you're not saying it but you're just behaving it you're just behaving in a manner which sometimes i might be difficult for me to interpret that particular sign or why you would be behaving in that manner but basically it is normally used to enhance oral communication it does not go on its own it works hand in hand with oral communication. How many? Okay. Yes. 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 Okay. Now I think my time will end. Uh, so I think we'll have the next Zoom. Uh,